This is the day that the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing, and we are glad in it. Welcome to Donaldson Chapel Bible Study. After the seasonal break, uh, we have returned to Bible study, and we're looking to have a blessed time. Oh, Lord, we come saying thank you. Now, Lord, during these, this time of unpredictability and so many things going on, we ask that you open our hearts and minds to receive a word from you. We ask uh, a blessing upon this study and those uh, who are joining us, we ask a blessing upon their lives. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. So, good evening. We're going to start uh, on a new series of uh, lessons. And the lessons uh, series entitled Revival of Practical Values for Living an Effective Life. Revival of Practical Values for Living an Effective Life. It just appears that we have strayed away from foundational uh, values to be able to deal and build community, to build faith communities, and to strive with the skills to be able to overcome the obstacles that come in front of us. So the, the values are there. And uh, so again, it's revival of practical values for living an effective life, living an effective life. And our, our first value that we will study on uh, this evening uh, is courage, courage. Oh, that is something that is needed to, today on an individual level, uh, a community level, and a nationwide level, courage. And uh, the definition we're going to use for courage is courage is a state of mind that enables uh, us to face difficulty or danger with confidence in spite of fear. I'm going to repeat that courage is a state of mind that enables us to face difficulty or danger with confidence in spite of fear, <laughs> a state of mind, a state of mind. Courage is a state of mind. So courage is not the absence of fear, rather it is acting or speaking despite of fear. Oh, we all know, uh, we all know what fear is. Have you ever been chased by a bad dog? Uh, have you ever found yourself Lost on the dark end street. Oh, fear comes in all sizes and can infiltrate many circumstances. Uh, but courage is not the absence of fear. Rather, it is acting or speaking despite of the fear. We all know of heroic stories in wartime or to in time of catastrophes and uh, maybe a fire or someone commits a, an, a, heroic, a heroic act. But also speaking, speaking. Many times we fail to speak the truth because we lack the courage to stand for right in the face of wrong. So courage is not just acting, but courage is also speaking. And it depends on our 
we have to have that state of mind that gives rise to courage from our total uh, being as we will speak uh, in this lesson. Uh, and it is very appropriate at this time to say that courage is a what? A legacy of our African-American uh, history. Courage is a legacy of our African-American uh, history. Our history is filled with courageous men and women. And uh, we, we think of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, uh, Medgar Edwards, Harriet, Term Harriet Tubman, Fannie Lou Hamer, Shirley Chisholm, and the list can go on and on and on. But those notable figures uh, in our uh, national and 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 world uh, history, but we could also think of grandma and grandpa, and mama and daddy. You know, uh, last uh, weekend, uh, I participated in a graveside funeral in Clinton, uh, Louisiana, uh, and the cemetery was off the road back in the woods. And it was from a, a intersection of Clinton that I was told, it was told by our brother Thomas Chase some years ago, where my grandmother grew up in rural Clinton, Louisiana. And you know, just making that ride back and looking down that road, he told me where she and our family grew up. It was it was a courageous act to move and try to come to East Baton Rouge, Paris, to make life better for children themselves and consequently uh, their descendants. And so many of us, we are blessed because someone made some courageous decisions and acts to make life better for us. I'm glad they made that move. I'm glad they made that uh, move. So at this time, as we get into our study of courage, a value uh, that will give rise to effective living. I'm talking about more than success and survival, effective. Are we effective in the purpose God has for us? Are we effective uh, in the purpose that God has for your life? Many times that takes courage. So let's look at Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. And we know Joshua succeeded Moses after God delivered the Hebrews from slavery in Egypt and they wandered in the desert because of disorganization, disobedience, calamity, conflict. So it took them 40 years to get to where God wanted them to go. But he, and Moses died, the leader died, and Joshua was the successor. And here as the Lord speaks to, 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 to Joshua in verse nine, it says, now I'm reading from the contemporary English version, the CEV, and it says, I have commanded you to be strong and brave. Don't ever be afraid are discouraging. I am the Lord your God, and I will be there to help you wherever you go. Telling George to be courageous and, and don't be afraid and discouraged. It was taking over a leadership role to lead God's people to the promised land. 
and God has promises on the purposes of our, uh, our lives. But what did the notice told Joshua, do not be discouraged. And if you've lived long enough, you find that discouragement and disappointment are two of the greatest tools that the enemy can use to stifle progress and to derail you, your destination for where God has for you and be an effective courage. It takes courage to move forward. It takes courage to get to where God wants you to go. Whether we're talking about our families, our educational lives, our church, your career, it takes courage. And what we see here from Joshua, one thing we need to re remember is uh, never fear knowing that God is near. This is this is what this is what the Lord is communicating to Joshua. This is a word that was take Joshua a long way, and this is a word for you to remember, never fear because the Lord is near. Uh, also, uh, faith gives rise to courage. Faith gives rise to courage. Let's look at Exodus uh, chapter 117. Exodus chapter 1, verse 17. Again, Exodus chapter 1, verse 17. And we're saying faith gives rise to courage. In Exodus chapter 1, verse 17, uh, we're going back in history. Here, the people, God's people, the Hebrews, are uh, enslaved in Egypt. And if you remember, they arrived in Egypt uh, through Joseph 400 and some years before this text, coming to Egypt and rising to a level of prominence, as we often like to say, second in command or minister in charge of affairs of the uh, Egyptian uh, empire. He brought his family and descendants there and they grew uh, into uh, a nation of people who were oppressed uh, by the Egyptians when the politics change. See, the politics will change on you. Whether we're talking about a country, whether we're talking about on your job, or at your school, you know, circumstances change and policies change and people will change with the circumstances. Now the Hebrews found themselves slaves inside of Egypt. And so the king, the Pharaoh, decided uh, that they were growing too strong. They were growing too strong. And it wasn't good politics. It wasn't good, good economics. They were working them hard to, to eliminate a problem. Want to eliminate the problem, always trace the money. It was a economic decision. So he ordered the midwives to kill the firstborn of the Hebrew uh, males. Uh, well, well, let me start at verse 15. This is finally the king called uh, Sephora and Pua, the two women who helped the Hebrew mothers when they gave birth. He told them, if a Hebrew woman gives birth to a girl, let the child live. If the baby is a boy, kill him. But the two women were faithful to God and did not kill the boys, even though the king had told them to. Verse 17, 
but the two women were faithful to God and did not kill the boys, even though the king had told them. They were midwives. They delivered the, the, the babies, uh, and, and they were faithful to God. They were uh, believers, and they had the courage not to kill them. Because verse 18, the king called them in again and say, why are you letting those baby boys live? In verse 19, they said, the Hebrew women have their babies much quicker than Egyptian women. By the time we arrive, their babies are already born. So uh, as uh, Jesus would later just tell the disciples, you have to be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove. Faith is a state of mind, but you also use uh, your your mind. So, but faith gives rise to it. Took it was a courageous act for for them to be able to assist the Hebrews in not killing the newborn babies. Also, we want to say trust God to direct you into the unknown and predictable. Joshua was leading the people into a place that they'd never been before. I wasn't a big Star Wars fan, but I remember when it used to come on, what it says, going out to a voyage into the unknown, something to that nature. Going into the unknown is courageous, but you must trust God to direct us into the unknown and unpredictable. You know, it's getting to the point now that in life, you could get in your car and head toward the store. You don't know what's going to happen. New jobs, new challenges with the political climate. We just dealt with an insurrection the unpredictable, the unimaginable, the unknown. But there's always a mystery to life, just living it every day. The telephone rings and you don't know what type of news is on the, the end. But to overcome the obstacles, many folk never move forward because they Fear the unknown, the unpredictable, a plan not specifically laid out, success not guaranteed ahead of time. You never to build, a builder gets an architect or designer to design what it's supposed to look like, but coming up with the idea, getting the finance, and with all the obstacles that can confront you about the elevation, uh, you gotta tear this down, and this may not happen. Some folks never build because they cannot get past the planning stage, fearing that there may not be a success. Well, but remember, uh, Joshua was going to stand for conquering, conquering and seizing our potential. And embracing our purpose would take courage. But you can, we can be of good courage because we should never fear knowing God is near and have faith, which allows you to put your trust and confidence in the Lord and say, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge the Lord and the Lord will direct your path. I know we probably, we have some, should have some witnesses out there. <laughs> all you had was courage. Now let's look at, uh, let's go to the book of Esther. Let's go to the book of uh, uh, Esther. Uh, Esther is right after the book of Nehemiah, and Nehemiah and Esther is 
right, the, right before the uh, book of Job. Let's go to Esther in a time when the Jews were captives in Persia. They were under Persian captivity and many had been taken from Judah and Jerusalem to exile in Persia. And uh, in this chapter, we're dealing with a king called Xerxes, a king called Xerxes. And Esther is the feature uh, person in this chapter. She would later become king, but there was a story behind. There's always a story behind upward mobility, if you want to call that. But Esther, they were Jewish captives, and Xerxes was the king. Uh, and let us look at, uh, begin at verse 10. The king was having a big banquet, a big party, a big throwdown. And in uh, verse uh, 10, he says, by the seventh day, King Xerxes was feeling happy because of so much wine. And he asked his seven personal servants, Mehuman, Bista, Habona, Bitha, uh, Abagatha, Zatha, and Caucus to bring Queen Vesta to him. I'm going to stop there. So the queen was full of wine. He was loaded. He was, he was loaded. And he asked, uh, uh, it was a male gathering. He asked the, his personal servants to bring the queen in to his drunken party. So in verse 11, it says, the king wanted her to wear her crown and let his people and his officials see how beautiful she was. The queen's servant told Queen Vesta that he had said, but she refused to go to him, and this made him terribly angry. He wanted to, he wanted to flaunt her beauty. You know, he wanted the men to look up on her. He was really abusing her, abusing her dignity. And that is, that is, that is something. It, we see what is happening to Queen Vashti here, but often we find ourselves in situations where circumstances or the people who control circumstances treat one, treat you in a way that will degrade you and reduce your dignity, make fun of you. You know, in our history, that was a common thing. African American history had to shuffle and scratch your head, talk to any kind of way. And this happened on jobs today. This happened in homes, in professional relationships, where you put in positions where you have you are required to either go along to get along. How many of you know about that? Go along to get along. Often when we're talking to children and youth, we talk about peer pressure. Go along to get along. Be like everybody else. Go against your beliefs. But Vashti refused. Vashti refused. And here's a lesson we can learn about the value of courage. There's something we need to know about courage. A courageous act, a courageous act does not always lead to a happy ending. Oh yeah. We, I guess we, we need to chew on that a bit. We need to keep it real a bit. A courageous act does not always lead to a happy ending. 
and then they didn't be happy for uh, Vashti because the king called them together again and he he vacated her position. Uh, he removed her as queen. And this is how Esther would become queen as a result of basically a beauty contest. Uh, but God used Esther. But Vashti, Vashti stood for womanhood, stood for dignity, stood for not to be uh, abused. But it was not a really happy ending because she lost her crown. She lost her crown. And many times, we, oftentimes, we will do anything. We will ignore God's rules, ignore, ignore God's laws, disregard love, to be able to receive some type of crown. But courageous people risk sorrow and reputation. Sometimes, when you, when you stand on courage, when you stand in the face of fear, when you speak truth to power, when you move, uh, when you get the courage to move into the unknown, to deal with the unpredictable, sometimes it doesn't have a happy ending, and you risk sorrow and reputation. Thinking of uh, Vashti, in 1857, a poet wrote a poem, and the last stanza, stanza of that poem of, about Vashti, in fact, the poem was entitled Vashti. It said of Vashti, when the king removed her from being queen because she wouldn't flaunt herself in front of a drunken bunch of drunken men. She said, speaking of Vashti, the last stanza says, and left the king pal and left the king palace of the palace of the king, proud of her spotless name, a woman who could bend to grief, but would not bow to shame. She would not bow to shame. Many times when we don't take a stand for courage. We bowed to shame. A shameful act was committed in Washington, D.C. An insurrection, an attempt to overthrow a, an election. But yet, when you listen to the debate and the voting to, today, it is clear that many, for many did not have the courage not to bow, courage not to bow, and it'll be a historical stain of shame on their records. They were not a profile in courage, many. They could not take the heat, knowing what is right. And many said in the debate, in Congress today, in the House of Representatives, we know that we know he did wrong. We know that this is an attack on our democracy that is bigger than us. That is the right thing to do is to do something. But we scared. How often we do that in our lives? How often we do that in, in the church? But brothers and sisters, as we prepare to close, we do want to say courage is a state of mind that enables us to face difficulty or danger with confidence in spite of fear, especially in the times we live in. We, 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 some scriptural lessons regarding courage. Uh, let's look at John 16, 33. John, the Gospel of John, 16.33. The Gospel of John, 16.33. If I'm moving a little fast, write that uh, verse down. Uh, it's Jesus, John chapter 16 is Jesus' last conversation with his disciples, called his last discourse before he went to the cross, according to John. And in 16.33, he says, I have told you this so you might have peace in your hearts because of me. 
While you in the world, you will have to suffer. But cheer up. I have defeated the world. King James said, be of good courage. I have defeated the world. And here's the point. Here's a lesson to learn. Courage grows from the presence of Christ in your life. The, Christ, the presence of Christ in your life, you know God is near because Jesus Christ lives in you when you accept Jesus Christ by faith. You know that he's there. He said, I will never leave you or, or forsake you. In this discourse, he said, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, he will live with you. And then he is with us. So do all you can to keep the presence of Christ in your life. Uh, look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Look at Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Not only should you keep the presence of Christ in your life, but, it, but more in depth in Ephesians 3, 20. Paul's prayer to the Ephesians. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, Paul says, I pray that Christ Jesus and the church will forever bring praise to God. His power at work in us can do more than we dare ask or imagine. The power is in you. So you know Christ is, is there, but courage is strength of the heart. Courage is the strength of the inner being. Courage is the strength on the inside. Oh, I've talked to some to courageous people in my time. And many times they're stretched out in ICU or in the hospital or in some uh, uncomfortable places, some places that we would want to be, but they're holding on to courage because it's in the heart. And you know, when Paul gets to the end of chapter six, uh, uh, Paul, uh, in chapter six of Ephesians, Paul say, uh, put on the whole armor of God so you can defend yourself against the devil's tricks, against the wiles of the devil. Put on the whole armor of, the, uh, of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. But his courage is the strength of the heart and we're going to close by going to Isaiah 54, 17. Isaiah, in the Old Testament, that great uh, prophetic book, Isaiah, chapter 54, verse 17. Isaiah 54, 17. We always remember this. Your state of mind will be all right. You know you can trust in God and have faith. You know the presence of the Lord is, is, is with you uh, deep on the inside. But here is the principle that we always must, re God's people must remember. Verse 17 says, weapons made to attack you won't be successful. Words spoken against you won't hurt at all. My service, the Lord promised to bless you with victory. Reading from the CV, weapons made made out attack, whether it's pop, pop, pop politics, whether it's voter suppression, whether it's worrying about the pand pand pandemic, whether it's layoffs, uh, 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 layoffs, uh, setbacks, uh, divorces, uh, talk about a hearsay, spreading your business all over social uh, media, backstabbing you, weapons formed against you that used to attack you will not stand. Words spoken against you won't hurt you at all. Because the Lord has promised victory. So brothers and sisters, let us, let us be courageous to be able to be effective in our personal lives as a community. It will take courage to stand up in these times. Don't let anyone stop. Let, you have to have courage to keep studying hard. You have the courage to keep working hard. Have courage when your body is in, in pain. 
have courage when you don't know where you're going, when you don't have six in one hand, you have six in one hand, a half a dozen in the other, you, you don't know which way is up, keep the courage. Because as it says in the King James, no weapon is formed against you. We'll stand. So God is on your side. God is on our side. So uh, we thank you and we uh, thank you. And next week we'll talk about the value of diligence. Diligence. We will start teach you on diligence next week. And so again, we invite, we thank you for joining us back for our Bible study. Uh, we're in a, 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 a spike, uh, brothers and sisters, the coronavirus is going to be with us a while. We have a, a lot to be thankful for in the midst. So we want you to uh, to to remember to, to pray for all those who stand in need of prayer. Uh, we want to uh, you to pray for Sister Lorraine uh, Chase. Uh, uh, she is at home. Her son, her son uh, Jonathan, is uh, here from one of the Carolinas, uh, taking care of her. You know Yolanda and Brother Chase is, is, is there. Let us con con keep Sister Lorraine Chase in prayer. Pray for that uh, uh, family. We know they have faith. Keep them in prayer. Pray for us, uh, Deaconess Mary Jackson. You know, she's had a series of deaths and she recently lost uh, her son-in-law uh, who will be uh, uh, funeralized. Uh, his funeral will be at uh, Halls, uh, at Halls and Son uh, this Saturday. Uh, could keep Deaconess Mary Jackson in prayer. Let us pray for uh, Mary Lane who must uh, have a pr procedure uh, this week, tomorrow, day after tomorrow, keep Sister Lanes in prayer. Uh, want to inform you that one of our, our dedicated and faithful deaconess deacons, our uh, Deacon Eugene LeBlanc, uh, Deacon LeBlanc uh, is in quarantine. Uh, he has slight symptoms. Uh, he's doing well. Spoke with him on the phone, but he is in uh, quarantine. Let us pray for our brother uh, uh, LeBlanc. Uh, and my brother-in-law, James Monroe, he's still in the hospital, uh, COVID-19. Uh, he's, he's asking for prayer, and he appreciates all the, the, the prayers and calls uh, he ha have received. So let us pray. Let us pray for all of uh, those, especially as we uh, exit the uh, holiday seasons of Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's Eve. Some people are missing folk. Some people are, are, are shut in and cannot move about. Let's keep each and every one uh, in prayer. Let us pray for Donaldson Chapel. Let us pray that we remain committed. Well, we had rededication and consecration uh, service Sunday. So let us keep our, our commitments uh, that in these times is this where really where the church has to become uh, the church. We, we, we thank the Donaldson Chapel family that all that was done for uh, Pastor Clyde Lewis, who uh, remained in, uh, who lived in Annex uh, 2. And you know he's moving to Lafayette. But let us pray for, uh, he was a, a victim of uh, Hurricane uh, Laura in uh, Lake Charles. So let's keep uh, Pastor Lewis and his uh, wife in prayer. And also we want to thank all of those who, who help uh, Annex in Annex 2, uh, particularly Reverend Eleanor Joseph and her team. Uh, also with Brother Isidore James, Sister Carolyn Monroe. We want to thank Sister Carolyn uh, Monroe uh, because uh, she donated the, uh, the donated the refrigerator that was in Annex 2 for Brother uh, Lewis, she donated it to the church and we placed it in the kitchen. We placed it in the kitchen, uh, in the uh, uh, kitchen in the church. And so uh, we can let, so when, when God returned us to the church, Carmen can make her coffee. Carmen can, can keep her uh, milk and coffee and all things uh, going. So, uh, we ask, uh, so we thank them 
uh, and we want to see you Saturday, Saturday uh, uh, from 12 to uh, 1.30, from, uh, I'm sorry, from 11 a.m. to 12.30, we have our first drive-through of 2000, uh, 2021, and we want to distribute the uh, calendars. They are beautiful. The calendars are free this year. Come by, let us see you on live stream to get your calendars, uh, church cup for the church, for the Lord's Supper service. And uh, uh, we, we, we may have a few masks and things in there, but we, but you can wear your favorite t-shirts. You can wear your favorite t-shirt for a, a school or a sports team. And for those who so desire, you can step out the car and let folks see you on DCBC family on DCBC family, and we, we want to look forward to see you. We do want to thank also, we want to thank uh, the uh, Council on Aging, uh, the Council on Aging for allowing us uh, to use us as a, a, a voice to uh, let our congregation know of uh, availability for those who are seven or older to get the COVID-19 vaccine. And we want to give a particular thanks to Sister Brenda Swanigan for being very disciplined and dedicated and getting in contact. And we had 13 to 15 of our members somewhere in that who were signed up for uh, a vaccine uh, appointments. And so we are thankful to the Council on Aging and uh, Brother Johnny Anderson, who was reaching out for them for, for that uh, truly community servanthood. And so let's keep in prayer in these times of it, in these times we live in. Let us re remember that God is on our side, and the same God who brought us through 2020 will take us through 2021. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth and forevermore. Let us all respond. Amen.